and school lunch programs, negotiated discounts for themselves to add to their billion dollar profit. That to me, sisters and brothers, is for oil for the home. She has to wrap her four year old child in a blanket, a blanket, keep him warm. Shameful. And as she was telling her story to the French shareholders, more than anything else right now, they need hope. They're not going to find hope from politicians, and they're not going to find. And winning! We're going to help them win! Can we do it? Yeah. and bring them out of poverty. And now he's here to help us organize hundreds of thousands of Sodexo and Aramark and Compass workers from all over the country. Sisters and brothers, Danny. <laughs> I, I mean, it's happening. I don't care if it's Terre Haute, Indiana. I don't care if it's Brooklyn, Ohio. Workers are standing up. And they said, we had enough. And right here, we want to tell Sodexo that you are right in the line of fire. You made it possible for men and women who work hard every day to make a living, a decent living, to have health care, to raise families, to build communities, to be good citizens by the deplorably low wages you pay and, what you, and, the, and the benefits you, you provide them. We're here today to say no more. No more. And not only that, we're starting something else that's extraordinary. Yes, in our history, we've worked and worked together in individual places, whether we're in France or whether we're in, whether we're in the UK, whether we're in here, right here, wherever we are. We've come together and we've worked together. But now we're building something extraordinary. We're building something because you cannot exist just working here on the issues that are in D.C., that are in Terre Haute, that are in Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn, Ohio. You have to be concerned about all workers. And that means trouble for this Adexo. That means that we're building a movement. A movement. You are part of that. You're the emerging part of that movement. This movement is crying out because what has happened is that workers have been exploited and use my language, all over the world. They've been screwed all over the world. And workers around the world are saying no more. You can imagine what's happening here? More than 2.5 billion people on this planet live on less than $2 a day. That means that they don't even have a job. More than a billion live on less than $1 a day. That means they're next place to starvation. What is happening is that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. That all over this world that those rights that workers have fought for for generations now are being snatched away from them. And while we've stayed around and wait, and look what's happening in the houses, the houses where capital resides, the houses where money resides. They were, they're talking about the recession is over. Well, the recession isn't over for working people. The recession isn't over for those workers at sex, so the recession is still alive and well. And we're saying that no more. We're saying that the real change that we see the real change that's possible is a possible change through our own imagination and a possible change through our own work. We worked hard. We continue to work hard. But it's going to take us to be out here to march some more, to tell, to reveal the lie. As Carlisle says, no lie lasts forever. And we have to reveal the lie. We have to tell the truth, and we have to speak truth to that power. And we're here to do that. We're starting right here. This is a global corporation. It has global responsibility, and we're going to hold, hold them accountable to that responsibility. And you're going to be there. We're, that's our marching orders. That's where we're going to take this fight to. Yeah. Now I want to introduce someone who undoubtedly is one of the great labor leaders, if not the greatest labor leader of his generation. He's organized more workers. He's put the issues of workers on the map in no other way since the great ones. I'm talking about A. Philip Randolph and all the great ones, all the great ones in there. He is, he is sadly retiring, but he's not going into hibernation. 
He's going to be out here working and fighting with us still. He continues to fight with us. He spent 38 years of his life fighting with us in here. He continues to be here. And particularly this is important because, you know, this is a nice day. It's a beautiful day. It's sunny, but it sure is a nice day to get arrested. Come on up here. Andy Stern. Give it up for Danny Glover.